the message that I would give to women of my generation is not to expect young women of a younger generation to engage issues in the same way that we did. Um, I think we have to give young women sort of um, a bit more understanding um, about their lives, which are not our lives. Um, we worked very hard to create opportunities for them uh, that sometimes are taken for granted. That work was often triggered by pain and suffering that we either experienced in our personal lives or that we saw others experience, our loved ones, our friends. And so that really galvanized us, that motivated us to get up and do something, to change the injustice. Whether it was the peace movement um, uh, to, to stop the war in Vietnam, or whether it was the civil rights movement uh, to stop the egregious discrimination against people because of their race or ethnic background, or whether it was the women's movement or the reproductive rights movement, those were all born out of a sense of rage, a sense of suffering that needed to stop. And sometimes young women who have vast opportunities of the sort that I didn't enjoy, my daughter now enjoys, sometimes don't fully appreciate it because it may not be a part of their daily awareness. That's the role of the Center for the Advancement of Women, to make it part of their sense of awareness. Women in colleges and on college campuses, I believe, all, well, young people in general, but it's certainly women, I believe, are showing evidence that they are coming to the, this, these issues from their own sense of pain, which is not our sense of pain. And our job is to make sure that they know the stories of the women who came before them and to make sure that the continuing work that individual women suffer is not gone, does not go unnoticed and unrecorded. Because those stories are the important stories that galvanize movements, that galvanize a determination for change.